Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will provide an introduction to hypothesis testing. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain the process of hypothesis testing and conduct a hypothesis test using a z-score for a single sample, x. Please print the corresponding handout for this video and feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes on the handout. Hypothesis is just a fancy way of saying a prediction. In other words, hypothesis testing just means to test a prediction that we have about a certain idea or potential new treatment. Since a population is too big to study, we will take a sample and test the sample to see if our prediction worked or not. Basically, hypothesis testing is a statistical procedure to decide whether the results of a study which used a sample, supports a hypothesis about a population. This diagram illustrates the process of hypothesis testing. Research often starts with a question that we want answered. Step one, the yellow Lego, involves stating hypothesis or prediction about the population. These hypothesis statements will use population notation, such as mu and sigma. Step two, the blue Lego is where we use the hypothesis to predict the characteristics that the sample should look like if the study worked. In other words, we set the criteria to decide if the study worked or not to make a decision at the end of the study. Step three, the red Lego, involves selecting a random representative sample, collecting data after we experiment on that sample, and then calculate statistics on that sample. Basically, step three involves math and corresponding formulas. Finally, step four, the green Lego, is to compare the sample data to the prediction made from the hypothesis in step one. In essence, we're comparing the sample back to the population. We'll make a decision to determine if the data fits the hypothesis or not. A test statistic is a technical term that refers to the type of statistical test or procedure that we will conduct on a sample to test a hypothesis. Chapter 4 introduces the first test statistic that you will learn this semester, the z-score statistic. Chapter 3 introduced how to calculate z-scores for a single x-score. We will build on z-scores and now use them for hypothesis testing for a single x-score sample. This is the first of many test statistics this semester, and each will follow the same process. So let's jump right in. The process of hypothesis testing started with the yellow Lego, which is to state hypotheses. There will be two types. The word null means zero or nothing. In statistical notation, it is H subscript O. In this case, H is for hypothesis and the O is for nothing or zero. In other words, we are hypothesizing that there will be no difference between the sample and population. But predicting that nothing will happen is boring. Therefore, we need a research hypothesis that something will happen. In statistical notation, it is H subscript one. It is also known as the alternative hypothesis. Here, we are hypothesizing that there will be a difference when we compare the sample to the population. Writing hypotheses the first time can be confusing for students, especially since you will need to write them in both a sentence and in statistical notation. So let's get started. For the null hypothesis, recall that we're predicting that nothing will happen. Thus, in a sentence, the null hypothesis would be written like this. The xx here refers to what we're studying. Insert treatment refers to writing in the specific treatment given as part of the study. It is important that you clearly state that a sample is being compared with a population. Recall that these hypotheses are about the population, so they will use population notation for population mean, which is mu. In notation, it will be written as this. Tx is 
clinical terminology or clinical shorthand for the word treatment. In an actual problem, you will, you will replace TX with the name of the treatment that you give to your sample. This notation means that if we could give the entire population the treatment that the sample is getting and nothing happens, then the sample will look like the population, or in this case, whatever the value of the population is. Now, the research hypothesis would look like this in a sentence. And in notation, if there was a difference between the sample and the population, then they should not equal the population mean. I understand this may be difficult to comprehend right now, but don't worry. Please wait for the lecture example at the end of the video for clarification. Step two, the blue Lego, is to set the criteria to make a decision whether the study worked or not. This step builds on what you learned about probability and the normal curve in chapter three. Recall that outliers or extreme scores on the normal curve are not very common or expected. In fact, outliers that are two standard deviations away from the mean occur approximately 4% of the time. So we're going to use probability to help set criteria. First, we will set our significance level, which is called P. Remember that P stands for probability. We are using probability to define an outlier. Thanks to statisticians, they made it easier on us by telling us that we will choose either a 0.05 significance level or a 0.01 significance level. Don't forget that probability can be reported in decimals, fractions, and percentages. So a 0.05 significance level also refers to 5%. Statisticians made it even easier for us and said that 0.05 is the preferred significance level to use. Now that we know our P, we need to find the critical value or critical region that tells us what the sample should look like if the study worked. We will find the corresponding z-score for the selected significance level. We will use the normal curve table to find the z. The next slide will demonstrate why the critical region for a 0.05 significance level is always z equals plus or minus 1.96 two tails. Place this graph in your notes. So let's graph what that critical region z would look like. Using a normal distribution, where are the outliers located? The outliers are in both tails. So we have two critical values, one above the mean and one below the mean. The significance level of 0.05 refers to 5%. Since the normal distribution is a symmetrical distribution, we will split 5% in half and each tail is 2.5%. Using 2.5% in the tail, the normal curve table states that the corresponding z-score is 1.96. In this case, a plus 1.96 and a minus 1.96. I encourage you to pause the video and look this up yourself in the normal curve table. Step three, the red Lego, is to collect data and calculate sample statistics. This step involves calculating the z-score for the sample score using population for a comparison. This is the formula. Notice it looks a lot like the z-score formula from chapter three. That's because it is. Since we're comparing the sample to the population, we just replaced m for mu and sd for sigma. We kept x because that is our sample. This is the shortest step but often the one where students make mistakes because they want to use the z-score formula from chapter three instead of this modified one from chapter four. Step four, the green Lego, 
is making a decision about whether the study worked or not. Basically, we're comparing the sample z-score, which is step three, to the population prediction or critical value z from step two. Based on this comparison, we will make one of two decisions. Either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Please see, the cam please see Canvas for the video and example handout that explains these two decisions. Now that we reviewed the four steps of hypothesis testing, are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have one practice example for you to review. This is a short summary of the four steps that we described above. Please note that these steps are for two-tailed hypothesis tests using z-scores. Please pause the video to write down these steps on the video handout. The lecture example wants to know if blueberry supplements have an effect on cognitive function. The details of this research study are provided in your video handout. Basically, we know that the adult population scores a, uh, what a population scores on a cognitive test. Since we cannot study the entire adult population, we have one patient take a blueberry supplement for six months. And then we compare this one patient to the entire population to see if the supplements worked or not. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to do the four steps on your own first on the handout. Then you can resume the video to show the answers. Step one. Since we are studying the effect on cognitive function, the hypotheses will include that variable. Since the treatment in the study was the blueberry supplement, I shorten it to BBS. In notation, if the sample is not different from the population, then the sample should have the same mean as the population, which is mu equals 80. The research hypothesis will reflect that there is a difference. And in notation, if the sample is different from the population, then the sample should not equal the same mean as the population. Step two. As the researcher, we get to decide the significance level, and the preferred one is 0.05 significance level. Since we don't know if the blueberry supplement is going to increase or decrease cognitive functioning, we need to draw a critical region Z for both tails, above and below the mean. The corresponding Z scores for a 0.05 significance level is two-tailed, Z equals plus or minus 1.96. The box indicates the final answer that I'll be looking for on a problem set and exam. Step three, we use the modified z-score formula that allows us to compare our sample x-score with population mu and sigma. We calculate using the values given to us, and the z-score for the one patient is z equals plus three. The box indicates the final answer that I will be looking for on a problem set and exams. Step four. Now we need to compare the sample z-score that we calculated in step three to the population prediction, which we determined in step two. In other words, does the z of plus three fall in the critical region z from step two? Since plus three is way beyond the tail, past the z of plus 1.96, the answer is yes. Then the decision is to reject the null hypothesis. The box here indicates the final answer that I will be looking for on a problem set and an exam. Basically, it looks like blueberry supplements probably work. More specifically, since the z-score for the sample was a plus three, which is above the mean, it looks like cognitive functioning increased. 
After a hypothesis test is conducted, the researcher must report and interpret the results of the study. Please see Canvas for the video and example handout that reviews the summary and interpretation statements for this practice example. In the summary, research involves testing hypotheses using a statistical procedure in order to determine the results of a study. Learning how to conduct a hypothesis test is a major Lego building block needed to understand statistics.